the hardware, it's the objective stuff. How many screens have you got? Right? Presence is that sense of whether you're there or not. Are you somewhere else? And the flow, you know, you can be engaged with Miss Pac-Man and you're in the flow. You can be a skier, you can be a runner, and you've got flow, you've got engagement, but you don't have this sense of presence that you're somewhere else. So what are some things that we can do to induce presence? We want to have some good presence in, uh, in our training. Flight and driving simulators can make people very passionate about the particular driving they're doing, the particular car they're handling. Mountain sites, of course, give a great sense of presence with very little technology whatsoever. Of course, if you turn, you know, after three days, you know who's behind the corner. Uh, world of Warcraft and other such games, you know, people meet and get married in this world. Right? You know, this is a very high sense of presence because it's responding to what you do and it's live characters, right? Spider-Man right next door gives you great presence as well. Not as interactive, but it's there. So what do these have in common? Obviously the visuals, the, a lot of the vendors out there on the floor have thought a lot about these visuals. We were sort of heavy in the visuals. What I would say is more important is actually uh, whether they match your psychological schemas. We, our schema is the way we expect things to work in the world. I have a restaurant schema. I walk in a restaurant, I sit down, I look at the menu. That's my schema. Now, if something's going to match my schema, whether it's about touch and feel or about uh, social interaction, then it's going to feel real. It's going to feel very strong, right? And it's going to engage all the senses that I can, not only the traditional five senses, but also vibrotactile, the little hand joy buzzer, and the, uh, of course, vestibular system, so you don't get nauseous in these uh, systems. So if you engage the more senses, the more presence it's going to, it's going to have. On the left, we have human realism. You know, graphics is nice, realism is nice. I'd still say it's just icing on the schemas, but you notice you don't want to do the uncanny valley effect that we see on the left, where you sort of think they look like zombies, right? So, uh, another thing is environmental audio. When uh, we ran people, there were RETC cadets through the belt, as Joe talked about. We had comments about that audio. You know, I, uh, I could tell something's going to happen because they're quiet. It's very strong, the audio. Anything that extends your body is very powerful. If you've played with the Kinect, I should say if you haven't played with the Kinect, go play with the Kinect. Uh, <laughs> you see people play with these, and they are not there. They're next to you, and they're in that world. They're not there at all. And it could be controlling a stick figure, but because it's a full body stick figure, you're all over it. We put firefighters in virtual environments. They've got to decide whether to fight that fire, whether to um, ventilate, spray water. When they get inside the building, the smoke is bubbling in 3D, and it comes down over their heads, and their eyes glaze over, and they panic, and we stress them out. Get to guess which one of these is the fire chief versus the rookie. This is blood pressure and heart rate. The rookie is up on the upper left. He's really panicking when he gets to the high stress fire, right? And so we've given him that sense of presence. The smoke gives it. The uh, you know, reaction time it gives it. And you might say, well, people who play a lot of video games are going to get inured to this. It's not going to matter to them anymore. On the top, we have a brand new person who's never been in this environment. On the bottom, we have a person who spends all day in this environment creating other such environments. They both get that heart rate jump. So this is some initial pilot proof that will happen. The, uh, Joe talked about the belt, the mixed reality. There, of course, ICT has a wonderful flat world mixed reality environment. They do different things with it. Uh, and these sorts of cues, both the physical and that response to your body, is what's key. Joe talked a little bit about our uh, ROTC experiment. They had to fight two virtuals and one live insurgent. We're doing measuring timing, tracking. We did a survey afterwards based on criteria that we got from Camp Dodge, the Army National Guard camp near us. So they want to know about, well, in this environment, training, can you scan from side to side? How's your physical proximity? We get great ratings on that. So that's really nice. The next one talks about how well can you uh, estimate the sound of, of the location of enemy fire by sound. And we got low ratings on that in the left-hand corner because we didn't do any sound. So phase one did no sound, but we've got some criteria ready to work on. Uh, but we want to be able to locate enemy fire. Sound is obviously very important. But even without the sound, just the physical environment combined with that virtual live, that time pressure gives them a pretty good sense of immersion. I mean, we're just medium immersion. We don't even have sound in it, right? Wait till we get some connects and some sound. So, you know, you get these quotes, right? That was a focused moment. That's what I'm looking for with presence. That was a focused moment. The bottom one, you get presence, they shot our cameraman accidentally. Right? He, did things, he wasn't even wearing the fatigues, and he was so into the task. Right? Uh, adding these physiological signals is a key thing as well. We, can actually, we hope to be able to use the physiology to more objectively determine the presence. Right? Are they stressed? Are they aroused? Are they vigilant? Are they feeling the presence? If I can objectively determine the feeling of presence, we've got some major advance. So, thank you.